Hey everyone, liars always lie, and Hillary's been caught lying regarding just about everything. As you will soon see, Hillary is both promoting and financing Antifa terrorism in an effort to violently overthrow the United States. Hillary even promises the violent Antifa terrorism will continue until she and her allies gain control over our government and our democratically elected president, Donald Trump, is removed from power. In fact, it's not just Hillary who seeks this. It's also feminists across the United States. That's what the Women's March is all about. It's about power, and they openly admit it. But that's the subject for another video. Let's dive in. The Daily Caller reports, Hillary using $800,000 in campaign funds for new political group. And this is from August 2017. Former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton transferred just under a million dollars from her failed 2016 presidential campaign to her new political group, FEC Filing Show. Hillary for America transferred $800,000 to Onward Together on May 1st, two weeks before Clinton even announced that she was launching this organization. The day after her campaign transferred the donor money to her new political organization, Hillary claimed she was now part of the resistance against Donald Trump. Now, back in May of 2017, CNN Politics reports, Hillary Clinton officially announced Monday her post-2016 election plans, a political organization aimed at funding resistance groups that are standing up to President Donald Trump. Clinton tweeted that she was launching Onward Together to encourage people to get involved, organize, and even run for office. In addition to that, in May 2017, NBC News reported on this as well, but they actually gave a few more details because, you know, CNN likes to lie through omission. That's like, you know, dishonesty through omission. So even though CNN is fake news, usually when they lie, it's because they leave out half the story. NBC News actually reports the other half in this particular case. And what they state is Clinton said she would support new groups like Indivisible, the vast progressive organizing network. I'm now back to being an activist citizen and part of the resistance, Clinton said last week at a luncheon in New York City. Clinton, back in May of 2017, took almost a million dollars of her campaign money to fund a new group called Onward Together that fuels the resistance. In other words, it finances the resistance. Who does Onward Together partner with? Well, their partners are listed on their website. It's Alliance for Youth Action, the Arena, the Collective Pack, in other words, a dark money group, Color of Change, Demand Justice, Emerge America, Indivisible, which NBC reported on, I Vote, Latino Victory, Something to Run, Swing Left, and Voto Latino. Hmm. Wasn't Voto Latino the organization that Google promoted to get out the Latino vote and then they all voted for Trump and everybody was pissed off and surprised? It's almost like Voto Latino was a leftist organization from the beginning, which, according to Onward Together and Hillary Clinton, kind of admit. So once a group partners with Onward Together, what kind of support do they receive? Well, Onward Together actually tells us. The answer will vary by organization, but include the following. Financial support, direct grants, fundraising support, online amplification, in-person surrogate assistance, one-on-one -on -one introductions, and meetings with donors, convenience. Strategic and leadership guidance, mentorship, training, one-on-one -on -one introductions with expert advisors, and of course, convenience again. Apparently, this is boilerplate language. Recognition, online endorsements, surrogate support, offline and event mentions via Onward Together surrogates, and of course, convenience, because, you know, we have to add extra words to these things to make ourselves sound self-important. This seems to be kind of like a leftist thing. And membership building, mobilizing Onward Together supporters to support partner organizations. Now, Hillary also mentions working with a group called Indivisible. Who are they? Well, Indivisible states in their About section that they were brought together by a practical guide to resist the Trump agenda. Indivisible is a movement of thousands of group leaders and more than a million members taking regular, iterative, and increasingly complex actions to resist the GOP's agenda, elect local champions, and fight for progressive policies. They make calls, they show up, they speak with their neighbors, they organize. And through that work, they've built hundreds of mini-movements in support of their local values. And now, 
After practice, training, and repetition, they've built lasting power on their home turf and a massive collective political muscle ready to be exercised each and every day in every corner of the country. Now, in their introduction section, they state, Donald Trump is the biggest popular vote loser in history to ever call himself president. In spite of the fact that he has no mandate, he will attempt to use his congressional majority to reshape America in his own racist, authoritarian, and corrupt image. If progressives are going to stop this, we must stand indivisibly opposed to Trump and the members of Congress, MOCs, who do his bidding. Together, we have the power to resist, and we have the power to win. They go on to state, Who is this document by and for? Indivisible admits that they are former progressive congressional staffers. They also state that they see the enthusiasm to fight the Trump agenda and want to share insider information on how to best influence Congress to do that. So guess what, conservative members of Congress? When you're speaking with leftist and progressive congressional staffers, they might actually be members of Indivisible who are acting undercover. Now, here's the most troubling piece about this that I've seen so far. This is a note to immigrants and non-citizens. While we encourage non-citizens to participate to the extent that they are able, individuals should only take actions that they are comfortable taking, and they should consider their particular set of circumstances before engaging in any of these activities. Now, here it comes. Individuals are under no obligation to provide any personally identifiable information to a member of Congress or their staff. Individuals may be asked for their name and zip code, but this is only to confirm that the person is a constituent, and providing this information is strictly voluntary. No one is required to provide any additional information, such as address, social security number, or immigration status. In other words, what they're saying is, if you're an illegal immigrant, you need to pretend that you're a voter. You need to pretend that you're able to vote, that the law allows you to vote. In other words, they're saying, if you're an illegal immigrant, we want you to commit fraud. Now, let's also look at advocacy tactics in addition to fraud. Now, it says that we've identified four key opportunity areas that just a handful of local constituents or illegal aliens fraudulently pretending to be constituents can use to great effect. Always record encounters on video, prepare questions ahead of time, Coordinate with your group and report back to local media. Town halls. Make them listen to you and report out when they don't. And what do they mean by that? Here's what they mean. Since you won't get the mic at an event like this, you have to attract attention to yourself and your message. Agree beforehand with your group on a simple message focused on a current or upcoming issue. Coordinate with each other to chant this message during any public remarks that your MOC, that's Member of Congress, makes. This can be difficult and a bit uncomfortable, but it sends a powerful message to your members of Congress that they won't be able to get press for any other events until they address your concerns. So, what are the takeaways about Indivisible? Well, first and foremost, they're a group created to resist Trump. They're the PC arm of Antifa, okay? And Hillary works with them. Now, these people who organize this group are former congressional staffers. They're insiders. They're promoting illegals to pretend to be voting citizens and constituents of targeted elected officials. They also promote video and audio recording at every event they're at. This is to control the narrative. They promote harassing and shutting down events of targeted officials who disagree with them. The reality is this is a top-down AstroTurf campaign. This is not only dishonest and unethical, it's possibly a federal crime, and it's definitely fraud. Remember, Hillary partners with and funds this group. She admits it. Now, it's not that Indivisible is just a nationwide astroturf campaign of fraud to target and harass members of Congress, but it also has local chapters that support Antifa at the grassroots level. This is Indivisible East Bay, located in Oakland. Indivisible East Bay is a chapter of the Indivisible Movement. We are a grassroots organization focused on stopping the Trump administration's policies. Okay? Here's an article written by Indivisible East Bay. We understand that some people feel uneasy in the presence of protesters wearing masks. In other words, Antifa. But we ask you to consider these facts. 
Like other people about whom we read far too often, they can find themselves in trouble for no reason other than simply existing while being black or brown or gay or a terrorist, apparently. They may have no intent to do anything to harm anyone, but may rely on masks to protect themselves from being identified and bullied or worse once the protest is over. Or maybe they're just concealing their faces because they're committing terroristic violence. But, you know, let's move on. That's no idle fear. Publicly posting the identities of counter-protesters for harassment and death threats is a common white supremacist tactic. You know who else uses this tactic? Law enforcement, when they post the information about criminals. So does the news. The news does the same thing when they talk about and report on criminals. Thus, by arresting those wearing masks, police may be endangering precisely the people who need the most protection from white supremacists. Now, the takeaways here are that Antifa East Bay is using logical fallacies to advocate for support of terrorism. Antifa terrorism, to be specific. The logical fallacy in question is an appeal to emotion. And remember, these people work with Hillary. Now, in the fall of this year, Hillary actually doubled down. Real Clear Politics reported on this. And they show a tweet from U.S. Senator Bill Cassidy. He says, At the time when Republicans are being shot, stabbed, doxxed, beaten, mail powdered, run out of restaurants, and sent death threats, Hillary Clinton urges Democrats to be even more uncivil. What an irresponsible statement. Every Democrat should denounce. Well, once you listen to this, you'll see that uh, Senator Cassidy is wrong. It's not just that every Democrat should denounce. Every American should denounce, man or woman, regardless of color of skin. Let's listen to the bigotry and Antifa violence promoted by Hillary Clinton. You cannot be civil with a political party that wants to destroy what you stand for, what you care about. That's why I believe if we are fortunate enough to win back the House and or the Senate, that's when civility can start again. But until then, the only thing that the Republicans seem to recognize and respect is strength. So what are the takeaways? Well, first, Hillary is telling her Antifa followers to continue terrorism and threatening Americans who disagree. This promotion of terrorism is a crime under U.S. Code 18, subsection 2385. Hillary has no respect for our country, our citizens, our Constitution, or U.S. law. In fact, she even openly admits that she fundraises for Antifa's Thanksgiving weekend border rush and the illegal trafficking of immigrants from Central America into the United States. The Guardian actually reported on an interview that they conducted with Hillary Clinton. They state, She tells me she has raised $1.5 million in the days before we meet to flood the border with lawyers, interpreters, experienced social workers, and psychologists. We just have to get as much expertise down there to force the federal government to give us everything. Now, what is she talking about? She's talking about BAM, the Coalition to Defend Affirmative Action, Integration, and Immigrants' Rights and the Fight for Equality by Any Means Necessary. BAM is an Antifa terrorist organization that has been widely reported on in the news. Okay, This is from the Gateway Pundit. Paid provocateurs are reported to be planning to lead caravan migrants in Tijuana in storming the El Chaparral border crossing Saturday morning in a replay of last Sunday's violent attack by rioting migrants that prompted a tear gas response from Border Patrol agents. So what's the takeaway here? It's very clear. According to The Guardian, Hillary personally fundraised at least $1.5 million that was laundered through front groups that made its way to Antifa terrorists and to illegal human traffickers and groups who want to overthrow our government. Now again, BAM is an Antifa group who advocates terrorism and the overthrow of the United States, and Hillary is indirectly funding them. Funding criminals are crimes. Funding terrorism is a crime. Hillary, by her own admission, continues to promote Antifa's terrorist violence against American citizens. Now, Let's go back to the Guardian interview because there's one other piece I want to talk about. It's this piece right here. Democrats have been provoked to condemn the president with a passion some on the left warn is becoming quote-unquote uncivil. I'm curious to know what Clinton thinks of this. Give me a break. 
What is more uncivil and cruel than taking children away? It should be met with resolve and strength. And if some of that comes across as a little uncivil, well, children's lives are at stake. Their futures are at stake. Now, when talking about Trump, she states, I mean, this is a crisis of his making that will damage kids for no good reason at all. And I think everybody should be focused on that until the children are reunited. Now, when Hillary made this statement, she herself slams the final nail into the feminist coffin of hypocrisy. How does she do this? Feminist Hillary Clinton claims to defend families and children. She even admits that children and family should stay together and that families split up by others should be reunited. And you know what? I completely agree. Families should never be split apart by outside forces. However, as you're about to see, the largest and most effective destroyers of the family in the United States is feminist ideology and its followers. This is Kate Millett, and she states, The complete destruction of traditional marriage and the nuclear family is the revolutionary or utopian goal of feminism. Now, who is Kate Millett? According to Wikipedia, Kate Millett was an American feminist writer, educator, artist, and activist. She attended Oxford University and was the first American woman to be awarded a degree with first-class honors after studying at St. Hilda's College, Oxford. She has been described as a seminal influence on second-wave feminism. Now, for all those people out there who state, for whatever reason, that third-wave feminism is the problem but second-wave is fine, this bigot right here is one of the original precursors of second-wave feminism who promoted the destruction of the family in the United States. Okay, Since second-wave feminism took over the world, its ideology has destroyed tens of millions of families in the United States alone, and even more across the globe. By advocating divorce culture, hashtag Me Too false allegations, and the demonization and witch hunting of men. In her own words, very clearly, Kate Millett wants families dead. Now, this brings us possibly to the most powerful behind-the-scenes second-wave feminist in the modern world, Catherine McKinnon. According to The Independent, she is one of America's most influential contemporary thinkers, eschewing the culture of freedom. Brian Appleyard investigates the woman who is arguably her country's most trenchant sex warrior. Freedom and equality are ideals in perpetual conflict. Freedom generates inequalities. Equality restricts freedom. In global terms, recent history has made freedom the dominant partner. Communism was an attempt to impose equality, and it failed catastrophically. For many in the West, this was unacceptable. The idea of equality was too important to be diluted. Groups that define themselves as oppressed, women, racial minorities, argued that freedom unrestrained by equality has resulted in them being denied freedom. Feminism and various civil rights movements all amount to demands that present freedom must be restricted to attain future equality. Catherine McKinnon, Professor of Law at the University of Michigan is currently the most influential advocate of equality. Arguably, she is the most powerful lawyer in the United States. Because of her, some lawyers believe feminism will be the most important force in legal debate for the next 25 years. All right, Catherine McKinnon, second wave feminist, most powerful attorney in the United States. She opposes the Constitution and the freedom in which it stands. She has indoctrinated lawyers for decades as feminist advocates. Now, according to Wikipedia, Catherine McKinnon is an American radical feminist legal scholar. She is an Elizabeth A. Long professor of law at the University of Michigan Law School, where she has been tenured since 1990, and is the James Barr Amos visiting professor of law at Harvard Law School. From 2008 to 2012, she was the special gender advisor to the prosecutor of the International Criminal Court. She says, Feminism, socialism, and communism are one and the same, and socialist communist governments is the goal of feminism. She's an advocate of communism and the end of America's constitutional freedoms. Now, Conservapedia states that this quote comes from a book on page 10 called Toward a Feminist Theory of the State. It's published by Harvard University Press in 1989. Now, just so that this isn't fake news, 
I actually looked for the book. And yes, Harvard University Press publishes this book. You can purchase it for $30.50 American. And by the way, this book is written by Catherine McKinnon. So it's not like somebody else wrote a book about Catherine McKinnon and took her out of context. Now, again, feminists still state that this quote has been misattributed to her. Now, I haven't read this book, but a lot of people state that this quote is valid. However, if you look on Wikipedia, this particular quote, let's look at it again. Feminism, socialism, and communism are one and the same, and socialist communist government is the goal of feminism. Now, I'm prone to believe this because of research I've done on Catherine McKinnon, but that's the subject for another video, and I'll probably actually make that video sooner than later, and I'll do a deeper dive on Catherine McKinnon and her un-American ideas. Um, but a lot of people state that this quote is a fake. And frankly, you can actually go to Wikipedia, and Wikipedia in certain spots will actually state that this is a misattribution. But I believe that's a lie. And the reason I believe that's a lie is because according to The New Yorker and other sources, feminists are forming groups to edit Wikipedia to recreate the truth in the feminist image. In other words, they're getting together to rewrite history to conceal feminist lies. Now, how do I know that feminists lie? Well, it's because I wrote the Amazon bestseller, The Feminist Lie. It was never about equality. My book was number one on multiple Amazon bestseller lists when it came out. And if you look right here, readers give it a 4.5 out of 5 stars. Now, how's it doing right now? Well, if we scroll down, let's take a look. Okay, it's number four in the Kindle store for civil rights. It's number seven in the Kindle store under ethics and professional responsibility. And it's number 12 in the censorship bestseller list. These are all paid bestseller lists, by the way. So it's in the top 20 in three bestseller lists and in the top 10 in two. And hashtag show alert. Uh, it's Christmas Eve. This book makes a great Christmas present, so I've heard. Lots of people have loved it. Buy it for your feminist friends today. So as you can see, Hillary is promoting and financing Antifa terrorism. She's formed and financed multiple organizations to do exactly that. Hillary is also openly admitted to financing illegal immigration to force our government to stop enforcing federal law. These are federal crimes and our attempts to overthrow our country. And, <laughs> amusingly enough, Hillary's admissions constitute waivers of her Fifth Amendment right to remain silent. That's something to keep in mind when the feds decide to prosecute her. Now, as a feminist, Hillary promotes family unity for foreign criminals, while feminism has continued to attack and destroy American families for decades. Prominent feminists admit that feminism's fight for equality is a fight against the freedoms guaranteed as civil rights by the United States Constitution. Even the most powerful attorney in the United States promotes communist equality over American freedoms. Now, many people ask, DDJ, as a MGTOW man, why are you doing videos about politics instead of men's issues? And my answer is this. As you can see from this video, the brand of political terrorism promoted by feminists like Hillary Clinton are men's issues. I haven't stopped educating men. I'm now educating them on the bigger picture and showing how Antifa terrorists working with feminist bigots are not only demonizing and witch hunting men, but are attempting to overthrow the United States and the freedoms guaranteed by our Constitution. Opposing Antifa terrorism and feminist bigotry are the same fight, because feminists like Hillary Clinton finance and promote Antifa terrorism. So in order to oppose one, MGTOW men have to oppose both. Opposition to feminist bigotry and the terrorism it finances is the precise reason I created misandry today. I'm DDJ, and this has been your dose of misandry today.